Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. Today, we're going to be talking about blessing same-sex unions. That's right. We're going to look at some of the recent statements made by Pope Francis, opening the door potentially to the Catholic Church blessing gay unions, and what our thoughts are on that. This is a very important pastoral topic to talk about, and unpacking Pope Francis's thoughts on this will be very, very helpful. Yeah, it's a, definitely a topic that's in the news a lot. Yeah. So, um, I, and it's I such a divisive much about thing it. in the news too. It's just you know, like conservatives, liberals, and I mean, it's, it becomes a partisan a partisan thing. But you know, when Pope Francis is talking about it, it it's a pastoral thing. It's not it's not a pol- it's not a po- political thing. Right. You know, and here's the thing: most people, I doubt, have read what Pope Francis has actually said mm-hmm. or and care. What, they or just care. want this, they want the snippet. So they can get angry. Well, and it's not, or, it's or not that happy, I, I, I don't think people are looking for snippets to get angry. I just think people have been conditioned to receive snippets mm-hmm. and become angry. Yeah. It's it's a manipulation of the of the person's intellect and emotional state. So yeah. I think this is gonna be a very helpful episode. So like let's just look at what he's what saying he actually and, wrote, yeah. and talk about yeah. it. Not that we're experts in the mind of, of the Holy Father, but at the same time, let's look at what he says, let's discuss it. We want you to participate charitably online in our comment sections as well. We need to have a productive and reinvigorated dialogue as a people. So this is a forum that we can dialogue about this charitably and be able to understand more clearly what Pope Francis is saying and what's the direction of the church and what the catechism instructs us to do in situations like this. Yeah, I mean, this has been, an, I think that the teaching of the church has been consistent and clear throughout the Absolutely. ages. 100%. Marriage is a sacrament of the church casted after the creation, man and woman becoming one. And the church has never viewed marriage as something outside of that. Mm -hmm. Even if even if certain cultural uh, formats and and eras where marriage was viewed differently sociologically, uh, while you get married to you know for a union between a king and a queen, and there's not really love or whatever, it's still a marriage between a man and a woman becoming one spiritual reality and entity. Mm Which I think is why they don't use the word marriage in in that context, because what it does is it makes the sacrament that I willfully went into with my wife, you know, something that's different. Well, I mean, right? our modern society does have same sex marriage and they've changed that, I guess, societal norm to marriage is just two people willingly entering into a union. Mm-hmm. OK, that's OK. The modern understanding of marriage. But. In this, I think the language is very clear that it's not, we're not talking about the church blessing same sex marriages. That's an impossibility. Mm -hmm. If the church ever said that, there would be whole scale schism, and there sh- and there rightfully should be. I mean, let's face it. This is this has been kicked up really from the beginning of Pope Francis's you know ministry, and, and when he's taken office, I still remember being interviewed by a local news station, Channel Four in Jacksonville, asking you know, well, what does Pope Francis mean? Like that you know, who am I to judge? So from the very beginning, you know, his stance and and this being a topic of uh, great. Um, you know, conflict within the body of Christ with people taking sides and and this becoming a politicized uh, initiative and and people using sound bites of Pope Francis, but not reading what he's saying and and understanding in the context of dogma and doctrine and what the church upholds and its catechetical teachings. This is this is very important to see. Like, okay, Pope Francis is speaking pastorally, he's not addressing anything dogmatic, he's not addressing anything doctrinal. You, you revelation is immutable. You cannot change revelation, right. and like you said, it will cause a great schism in the church if yeah. that if that takes place. That's a great point um, <clears throat> that he's talking pastorally because I I found him to be a, a very pastoral. Uh, his approach has been very pastoral in some of his writings and things like that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you can take it out of context and mm-hmm. say this is a doctrinal matter, and so. Th- that's a, a great distinction, I think, in, in this uh, Well, show. you know, a lot of times people look at, I would say, doctrinal precision as a negative thing and being very uptight with the faith. But 
clarity is charity. Mm -hmm. Having a very clear teaching is not a bad thing. And that's where I think a lot of these controversies around Pope Francis have come up is because he speaks pastorally. He speaks um, not always in a very clearly defined way, and it leaves room for people to say, this is what he this meant. is what he meant, and right. I, whether he does that on purpose or not, I think is a matter of debate. But what how this whole topic came up, of specifically blessing of gay unions, was five cardinals sent Pope Francis five dubia. Mm-hmm. Okay, dubia now, means du- doubt. It's, yeah. It means a doubt, right? So dubious. When, typically, what happens is when cardinals are asking for a clear explanation from the Holy Father on specific matters, they send him a dubia and say, "Would you please answer this, yes or no." That's it. The, traditionally, it's a yes or no answer. You know, it goes back to scripture. Let your yes be a yes, your no be a no. Anything more is from the evil one, right? Mm-hmm. So these five cardinals, Cardinal Brandmuller, Cardinal Burke, Zen, Seurat, uh, not Cardinal, yeah, Cardinal Zen, Seurat, and then uh, Juan Sandoval Iniguez, they sent these five questions to the Pope. The Pope didn't answer traditionally with a yes or a no. He gave these kind of long, more written out things. Now, that could be looked at as pastoral, like, hey, I'm talking to these cardinals, answering their questions. But it leaves room for interpretation where a yes or a no doesn't. Mm-hmm. So that's how this controversy is getting kicked up, okay? Mm-hmm. And this is all in the context of the synod and synodality and, um, you know, German bishops, and they're going to be voting to have women priests. Like, It mm-hmm. really seems like a pretty trying and, and crazy time in the church, right? Mm-hmm. And people are trying to make sense of it. And, and it's a trying and crazy time in the world right now, It too. really is. So this particular issue was dubium. So dubium would be a singular. Dubia would be the plural. So dubium number two, this was the question they asked. Dubium regarding the assertion that widespread practice of blessing of same-sex unions is in accordance with revelation and magisterium. So let's jump into the catechism related to this. Okay. And it gives us 2357. So just to, to look at the context and then what was written. 2357 from the Catechism, entitled Chastity and Homosexuality. Homosexuality refers to relations between men or between women who experience an exclusive or predominant sexual attraction toward persons of the same sex. It has taken a great variety of forms through the centuries and in different cultures. Its psychological genesis remains largely unexplained. Basing itself on sacred scripture, which presents homosexual acts as acts of grave depravity, and that reference is related to Genesis 19, verse 1 through 29, tradition has always declared that, quote, homosexual acts are intrinsically disordered. Reference is from persona humana. They are contrary to the natural law. They close the sexual act to the gift of life. They do not proceed from a genuine, affective, and sexual complementarity. Under no circumstances can they be approved, period. That, so That's that clear. Is, that is as clear of a catechetical teaching. Now, what I do want to say pastorally related to this, mm-hmm. okay? So now this is clear, yes, no, black, white, very clear. We need to pastorally provide for people of this culture, of this time, Mm -hmm. a word of concern for people is the word disordered. What's being discussed is very philosophical, ethical language. Yeah, Aristotelian Aristotelian language. This isn't saying, you know, you're completely broken and warped and and disordered and it's like an attack on the person. Yeah, not disordered like a kleptomania or pyromania, not that kind of disorder. Like, yo, bro, you're like totally disordered. Get out, you know. It's not, it's not that. This is a very, this is a very philosophical treatment, and it's and these are ethical terms, like you're saying, from Aristotle. I would say a better word that or a word that could be used there is that its ontological goal is different than the natural order of sex. Yeah. That would be probably a way that would be maybe even higher brow but a little less confusing to the Mm -hmm. modern ear look its purpose the purpose of sex is to be open to procreation and the unity of a man and woman same-sex relationships close that off ontologically because they cannot create life Mm -hmm. from them Mm -hmm. so that is the disorder or disorientation Mm -hmm. or the there is the there's no ontological end that ends in a Mm same-sex relationship having children that's why it's called 
disordered, not as in a psychological disorder. But, but, but the church, old. the church has stepped back from that too. To to yeah. uh, you know, in in the last you know fifty years, forty years. Using they, the word disorder. Using yeah. the word mm -hmm. disorder. And they mm -hmm. said they say, like, you know, if if I go and just hang out in brothels with a wife, you know, and children to care for, that I'm ordering my sexuality outside mm -hmm. of this intention that yes. God had creating a man and a woman. And mm -hmm. that, that that disorder would would, you know, I would suffer from that. My kids would suffer from that. My mm -hmm. wife would suffer from that. Mm -hmm. So I think when you say disordered, you know, we're not directly like attacking one disorder. Mm -hmm. We're mentioning that in in light of mm -hmm. many, many mm -hmm. disorders right. that yeah. are out there sexually. And and when we're talking about union and communal experiences and and yes, you can draw sexual gratification from same sex attraction and mo and being motivated by that attraction. You're expressing your sexuality in a same sex uh, interaction that could provide gratification. But what we're talking mm. about here philosophically and, and at a deeper level of spirituality is complementarity. Mm -hmm. So the, the complementarity between man and woman is not just exclusively uh, that this is a fruitful uh, outcome. Um, that is the most important thing. That is what yeah. that intimacy is driven toward in an ordered manner by God's created order. And thank God that we have the attraction, all these other aspects that help us to procreate and participate in creation, but also the sense of physiologically, and this is the theology of the body of St. John Paul II too, but there is a beauty to the physicality of man and woman and the way that their bodies and the muscles within their physiological nature are receptive and giving and and this expression of this interaction between man and woman by nature of the body is also uh, complementing the created design. So it is ordered in that manner as well. Um, not to say that, you know, can men and men or women and women come together and have uh, amazing intellectual communion, spiritual communion, friendship, yeah. you know, the all of those things, absolutely. Um, so I think this is a great context to begin looking mm -hmm. at, yeah. you know, some of this pastoral dialogue and this first, uh, this, this response to the second dubia. So here's the, here's the question as the five cardinals asked it. And again, traditionally, this would have been yes or no. Mm -hmm. There's no ambiguity in yes or no. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what they were looking for. So here's the question. According to divine revelation, attested in sacred scripture, which the church teaches, listening to it devoutly, guarding it scrupulously, and explaining it faithfully in accord with the divine commission with the help of the Holy Spirit, in the beginning, God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them, and blessed them to be fruitful. And hence the apostle Paul teaches that denying sexual difference is the consequence of denying the creator. We ask... Can the church deviate from this principle, considering it in contrast to what was taught in Veritati Splendor, as a mere ideal and accept as a possible good, objectively, objectively sinful situations such as unions with persons of the same sex without departing from related revealed doctrine? Yes or no? Pope Francis didn't give a yes or no. Okay, so that's... Now, kind, of, kind of a break from tradition, right? But it also does express his pastoral. Exactly. Approach. So I, I can see both sides. People mm -hmm. say, "Look, just give us a yes or no. Don't make it yeah, complicated." Mm -hmm. But then he's like, "It's a complicated thing." There's, mm -hmm. the, you know, so my preference would be yes same, or no. In the same way of like, okay, we just read the catechism. Yeah, they had several references within the catechism. Yeah, that deserve looking at and conversation. In the same way that this this uh, this question is jam packed. <laughs> right. You know, and yeah. a lot of stuff <laughs> with a lot a of yes stuff. Or no. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, okay, give me a yes or no. Yeah. No, you're going to, now you're going to pigeonhole somebody yeah. in, in a response that, that then could be interpreted, you know, in, in a very, very narrow sense. Yeah. But I think the heart of the question, is it in accordance with scripture and revelation that we bless something that is objectively sinful, mm -hmm. like a same sex mm -hmm. union? Okay. So here's Pope Francis's response. And he responded in a few paragraphs. Um, the first one, the church has a very clear understanding of marriage, an exclusive, stable, and indissoluble union between a man and a woman naturally open to procreation. Only this union can be called, quote, marriage. 
other forms of union realize it only in a partial and analogous way. From Amoris Laetitia 292. So they cannot be strictly called, quote, marriage. So that's the first response. Yeah. Uh, B, it is not just a matter of names, but the reality we call marriage has a unique essential constitution that requires an exclusive name, not applicable to other realities. It is undoubtedly much more than a mere, quote, ideal. C, for this reason, the church avoids any type of rite or sacramental that might contradict this conviction and suggest that something that is not marriage is recognized as marriage. D. Now this is the one. However, in our relationships with people, we must not lose the pastoral charity, which should permeate all our decisions and attitudes. The defense of objective truth is not the only expression of this charity. It also includes kindness, patience, understanding, tenderness, and encouragement. Therefore, we cannot be judges who only deny, reject, and exclude. This is and can be and has been and will a, be <laughs> and will be a point of dispute for people. Depending on how you approach divine revelation mm -hmm. and how you approach Christ the high priest and and the one who comes back to judge the living and the dead. So this this is an important one, and we do have several more uh, responses. So let's honor Pope Francis in the context of his dubium responses, yep. and then we'll go back to this one in particular and unpack it yeah, yeah. a little bit. So e. e, therefore, pastoral prudence must adequately discern whether there are forms of blessing, requested by one or more persons that do not convey a mistaken concept of marriage, for when a blessing is requested, it is expressing a plea to God for help, a supplication to live better, a trust in a father who can help us live better. F. On the other hand, although there are situations that are not morally acceptable from an objective point of view, the same pastoral charity requires us not to simply treat as sinners other people whose guilt or responsibility may be mitigated by various factors affecting subjective accountability. That's a very important quotation from St. John Paul II in Reconciliatio et Penitentia. Reconciliation and Penance. And then finally, G. Decisions that may be part of pastoral prudence in certain circumstances should not necessarily become a norm. That is, it is not appropriate for a diocese, a bishop's conference, or any other ecclesial structure to constantly and officially enable procedures or rituals for all kinds of matters, because not everything that, quote, is part of a practical discernment in particular circumstances can be elevated to the level of a rule, end quote, as this would lead to intolerable causistry, amoris Laetitia. Canon law should not and cannot cover everything, nor should Episcopal conferences with their varied documents and protocols claim to do so, as the life of the church flows through many channels other than normative ones. And that's how he concluded his <laughs> response um, to... So was that a yes or a no? So, and, and, that's, and that's, where, that's where, you know, it's, it's left to... Um, a very clear, in my mind, reading this, uh, this is a clear... Maybe. Well, th this is, it's clear that there is no shift and change for understanding homosexual unions as marriage. I would agree. He's saying no. I would agree right. with that. So that is a very clear answer mm -hmm. from him. And, and he's answering it in the sense of, well, you're asking me if I can bless people, pastorally speaking, you know, I, I need, you know, like, the, and now we can go and jump right into D in, in the dubium. Um, in defense of objective truth, it is not the only expression of this charity. 
we we have to defend objective truth. He's talking about objectivity, what is objectively right and wrong. But in respect to that, you know, the expression of charity related to truth also includes kindness, patience, understanding, tenderness, and encouragement. When I'm in my pastoral care for my people, I've got all sorts of stuff that comes to me on the local level. He's got a global level of, of stuff. He's very clearly responding to the German, yeah. the, the German bishops. Yep. Yeah. As clearly as possible. Yeah. Nobody's celebrating. Well, groups of people that are criticizing the Pope are not celebrating that. They should be celebrating that. He's not straying from, from doctrine in respect to that. But in respect to D, you know, that that speaks to my pastoral care for everybody that I support. Yeah, yeah you, 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 you know, what stuck out to me is, yeah, I got a no from that. But I also got from that that pastors, right, that are, are encountering same-sex couples, that the blessing, the blessing that is given, if it is even given pastorally, has to come from compassion, tenderness, kindness, and, and not in support of something that is a, a norm in the church, yeah. a, a, a teaching that's a that's, norm in I the church. I think that's a great, right? that's it's a like, great way to put are it. You, if they're struggling, if they're, you know, uh, you, you know, I look at it this way. All right, so you, you can take a, a couple different options here. One is someone who's generally same sex attracted to another person and they have friendship and mm -hmm. all these other things too. They're not, you know, having sex or whatever. You've got that. You've got, you've got people who are sexually involved. Mm -hmm. You know, you can look at, you know, homosexuals like these guys in the, in the choir in, in San Francisco and they, they say they're coming for your children. How do you not get angry as a father? Oh yeah. When they say that, yeah. I'm like, come on. Yeah. Right. However, that distorts somebody who is in need mm -hmm. of God's forgiveness, yeah. God's compassion, <clears throat> and somebody pastorally to journey with them through that yes. into the light, Correct. right? Correct. It's it's very easy to take sides, yeah. but yeah. I think what he's saying here, in my opinion, is no. However, we are here to guide them, yeah. and he's not really giving us the matters upon which mm -hmm. we are to guide them, which I think is probably not going to be... <laughs> interpreted properly with a lot of people. It's so true. And, right. and there's a lot of people that do not want them <laughs> to interpret the Pope correctly in this. Right. So, you know, let's step into the shoes of the fisherman for a second. <laughs> All right, let me respond. Yes, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what about, like, there's so many more questions with people, not who are high up and mighty and trying to, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. the people who are suffering are the people who are suffering going to confession. Yeah. They're trying to find their way. They're trying to find fulfillment. They're trying to discern love. Like, I want to be loved. I want to be cared for. I want to have communion and community with people. Yeah. I, I, look, I don't think this is making anybody happy. No. It's not making... <laughs> if you really read this, nobody who is trenched in on the side and says, I want it to turn my way is going to be happy from this. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are going to in purposely misinterpret this to either support that, yes, the Catholic Church now says you can have gay marriage, or the Pope absolutely shut it down. And everyone's going to try to make a cent off of this and make a nickel off of this by yep. making an article, making a blog post mm -hmm. or whatever. And, and we're closing the bank right now, yeah. if you're listening in, because he clearly stated no to marriage. Right. But he doesn't even, I don't think, necessarily says that you can now start blessing mm -hmm. same-sex unions. He said, pastoral prudence must discern whether there are forms of blessing that could work. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's just saying, we even have to think about whether there's even such a thing that's even a possibility that would give the impression because the church cannot bless sin. Mm -hmm. It never can. It never will. So if, if a same-sex couple came to a priest and said, will you bless us. What are you blessing? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. aspect of their reality are you blessing? Mm -hmm. Their marriage? You can't do it. Their sexual attraction to each other? You can't do that. Them as people? Yes. Mm -hmm. But what is the relationship between them? Because they're asking, let's be realistic. When people are asking for a blessing from a church, they're asking for justification of their actions. They're not asking for just typically. I mean, there will be people who want just a blessing. Mm -hmm. But people who are politicizing this, they want to be a Pharisee and trick mm -hmm. you into a question. Mm -hmm. And what they're saying is, are you giving me license to perform homosexual acts? Mm -hmm. Am I justified in doing so? That's mm -hmm. what they're asking mm -hmm. for. 
And there's not a simple answer to that. And 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 this is where it, it's it's a pastoral challenge. It is absolutely a pastoral challenge, and I'm grateful to have a pope that is pastoral trying to help guide these situations because i mean let let's look at this though like what is kindness directed toward what is patience directed toward understanding like tenderness like these are things like when you think patience what what I, do you think that's I, directed toward i mean in scripture it says pa- the patience of god is directed towards our salvation like looking back on my sinfulness and you know practicing as a catholic god has always shown me compassion, Mm -hmm. tenderness. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been patient with Mm -hmm. me, you know, Mm -hmm. like all these things. And what does that direct me to? It directs me to love him more and to be more in communion with him. Yes. And that, and that's ultimately what this is getting at. It's like, it's patience in relationship to our salvation, understanding kindness in relationship. We all should really long to have salvation for our brothers and sisters Mm -hmm. and people of all nations, but it requires us to one, speak the truth objectively and defend the truth. This is exactly what he's saying. The defense of objective truth is not the only expression of this charity. It must be accompanied by, I'm paraphrasing, and inclusive of, it also includes kindness, Mm -hmm. patience, understanding, tenderness. When I think of tenderness in my own sinfulness, when I go to, when I go to Father Tetlow to go to confession. It's like, I always receive the tenderness of his support. Mm -hmm. That's why I care about him so much. And I love him. Yeah. You know, and and he's such a great confessor and a great priest. Yes. You know, and the encouragement that I get out of that is like, I'm not going to give up. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to give up and I'm going to continue to strive after the Lord who is showing me love through this priest, through this pastoral person who's blessing me because I need, I need blessing, man. I need to be fed. (laughs) Eucharist is for the sick. You know, I need, I'm, I'm working this out. Like St. Paul says, I'm working out my salvation with fear and trembling. I'm trying to make my effort to be more free, more full of God, enter into greater holiness, move my heart from a more um, self-possessed interest to other people. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be more rooted in this type of pastoral charity in that way toward all people wherever they may be on their journey. But I could argue, let's say pastorally, is it pastoral to put out an answer that leaves ambiguity? Is this pastoral? So let me let me return a question. Like, would there not be ambiguity to the the breadth of the church's revelation if he just would have said no to their question? I, well, I don't know. That's what I'm asking. You know, like I think so there's like, I think there still is going to be ambiguity because you know you you cannot respond to that type of a question with just a simple no. He says no. He doesn't say no. He says yeah, he, he talks around no, but he says okay. I, I think he's trying to make a point. Well, um, he's trying to teach. He's, he's trying, trying to, to teach, teach. And, exactly. and 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 he's teaching through a, a more of a pastoral and type I, and of I, approach. And I see that, yeah. And you know the thing I could I could like I'm, I'm with you. I could see it both ways, yeah. right? But you know, at, at the end of the day, when you when you say tenderness, when you say understanding, when you say like these are these are deep spiritual like realities that if you place normative things on it like okay if somebody comes to you you have to be tender and you have to listen for 5 minutes yeah. that doesn't effectively produce an outcome for somebody who's now praying as a pastor like god pope said to be more charitable to be what does this mean in my life uh-huh. working out their own salvation as somebody who can see the other through perseverance through all these, you know, no, these I mean, I gifts. see, I see the yeah. wisdom and the reason why he would respond yeah. to this, you know, not uh, yes put, or no, put it in a different light too, like abortion mm-hmm. used to only be forgivable by the Pope. Mm-hmm. You'd have to appeal to the apostolic penitentiary for forgiveness. Mm-hmm. You know, then the Pope establishes a bridge <clears throat> with the United States of America, giving priests faculties to be able to forgive the sin. Why? Because of the outbreak of that type of a, uh, of sin. Yeah, now, I'm not taking I'm not taking hard sides here. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm really asking. No, questions. no, I think you're yeah. I think you're handling so, it. So I think it's wrong to do that because this is a you he's can. also a human being. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. And you don't know what's going on Does inside his heart. Does that kind of pastoral latitude? Yeah. 
create the condition where there are more abortions, where there are more ambiguity. Bingo. That's why I brought it up. So yeah. that's what. So what I'm saying is, couldn't he have said no? Here's why, in a loving way. Yes. Here's why. Leaving the ambiguity is not always like, hey, sheep, here's your boundaries. There's no fence, but these are the mm -hmm. boundaries. You know what they are, but I'm not putting up a hard boundary. Mm -hmm. Sheep are going to run off. They're mm -hmm. going to. That's just the mm -hmm. nature of sheep. Mm -hmm. So let me let me pitch it this way too. Like, for in respect to A B C D E F G, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what do you remember from what Pope Francis said in response? Like, what stands out for you most prominently? Well, I think, and I, I want to ask both of you. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll let you take that first. Yeah, I mean, I th I think. I think he could. I think he could have substantiated a yes or no mm -hmm. a little more. Like, I think he could have done that. But when I read through the whole thing, I understand what he's trying to say, yeah. right? I and that. I don't accuse him, right, of something that, I, like, who am I to judge his intention here, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Like, I can't judge. I mean, I can judge what he says, mm -hmm. right? But I don't see any clear intent mm -hmm. that he's making to open the door mm -hmm. for you know, blessing sinful, you know, relationships. I don't see that, but I do see a lot like Vatican II, these documents were put out and 80% of the people that read them interpreted the wrong mm -hmm. way, yep. yeah. right? And so for me, I would like to see how does this look in your pastoral life? Yeah. Be my pastor and so, tell me how to be a pastor. So that's You're why the pastor I like, of pastors. I look, I look through this, and the thing that stands out for me is the thing that touched my heart the most, which is the pastoral accompaniment and the yeah. and the love, the tenderness, the understanding, mm -hmm. the encouragement, the reconciliation that JP two yeah. was talking about. Like that, that is where that's what's going to stand out for me. So that's what I'm going to talk about, right? Right. But <clears throat> what about people who have agendas? Mm -hmm. right. They're going to lock into this because now we have a lot of material, right? yeah. and they're going to lock into go. different pieces of it, mm. and that's what they're going to talk mm. about. Mm. So to your point, I think you know the, the clarity of response is we're begging for that. And that's what the cardinals are asking yeah. for. And, and so now we can kind of respect, too, where the cardinals are coming from sure. and say, yeah, it's important that we have cardinals. That's why they are there, yeah. <laughs> you know? to offer these these types of exchanges. Sure. Now living in a digital world, all of this is <laughs> social media-fied and then thrown out to every corner of the globe. Now everybody's weighing in and it's creating this unrest. Doesn't it suck being um, practical and looking at both sides of a situation? <laughs> Isn't it so much easier just to say you're going to hell or you're going to heaven? Yeah. So you know, here's what stands out to me. And here's, here's my cynical side. And here's what I hope is not happening. But I'm a cynic. You guys know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And more often than not, I prove to be right in my cynicism because it's based on my experience that human beings typically play both sides of the coin, right? Okay. I think he was very clearly saying, no, it can't be marriage. But maybe, you know, if you're good, you might be able to get what you really want on this backside deal, right? You might be able to get a I blessing. I don't think so at all, okay. dude. I mean, that's, but that's you're a giving false hope. By not being pastorally clear, by not being pastorally clear, you are giving false hope to people who are objectively living in sin mm -hmm. that there might be a day when the Pope will say into your heart's wish that your gay marriage is right all along and that you are right. You're giving false hope by in your intent. And I'm going to presume good intent to be a good pastor and to be loving to people who need it, who are on the fringes of society because mm -hmm. of their sexuality. He wants to be good to them. So he doesn't want to just say no. So he wants to give them something that makes them feel good. And it's a it's out of tenderness and mercy that you want to do something good, but that's not always the answer. A spoonful of sugar is not always the medicine people need. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'm not the Pope. I'm not even a really great Catholic. But to me, the lack of clarity here, I can understand why it's a problem for people reading yeah. this who have in their mind, a clearer view. But mm -hmm. the Pope, I mean, I get why he's doing it. These people are people too, and they need love and they need attention. Mm -hmm. My fear is that it gives them false hope and it also gives them the impression that there's a possibility that the church will change their teaching. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like stringing them along. Hey, keep being Catholic, even though your relationship ostensibly puts you outside of Catholic teaching, we're gonna keep throwing you these little bones 
to keep it open so the church doesn't look like the mean bad guy in the modern world and you keep giving us your donations or you keep supporting us. Like, yeah. that's the yeah. cynical side of me yeah, that it's says... it's very cynical, yeah. But it's realpolitik. This is what people do. No, I know that's what you people know? do. And, and, I, and I don't like people playing games with people's spirituality. And it, it feels it, like a game, because there's a gay person out there yeah. who needs a yes or no answer and then love. Not to be part of a political pawn of bishops in Germany and cardinals in... Rome and pastors and podcasters like yeah. us and news organizations. They're people. Yeah. And this kind of stuff without the clarity can give them false impressions, which will ultimately, if it goes against them, can damage them spiritually way more than a clear yes or no would. That's my position. I, but I also think like the church is very clear on this. And like, the, I, I, I think he's not even recognizing it because it's, it's, it's a reality. It's, it's the deposit of our faith. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think he's like, do I have to take you back to the catechism? Do I have to like, we already have, we have already said this. It's the deposit of our faith. Right. So what, what I think, what I think he's doing is he's responding to this pastoral approach. And I want to give you guys an example for me to guide my children as a father. Mm -hmm. I have to be interested in their lives. Mm -hmm. I have to take part of it. I have to gaze upon them like a loving father. They have to see in me that I have tenderness, understanding. If I'm able to even guide them somewhere, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. that is like, if that's not there, if I'm busy and I'm like, do whatever, you know, the, what, how are they going to respond to me correcting them? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, when he said that, you know, pastors should smell like their sheep, I really think it's that engagement factor mm -hmm. that he's talking about and in line with, there's with no, those communications. There's no question. And, and it's like, you know, D should not then, you know, replace A of what he's saying. The church has a very clear understanding of marriage and exclusive. And it's not his. Stable. It's the right, church. Indissoluble. Mm -hmm. It's not his. Between a man yeah. and a woman, mm -hmm. naturally open to procreation. You know, he's, he's clear. Like, this is not changing. Right. Only this union can be called marriage. And I like that they say something, even if it's a different word, there's a there's more than just an ideal here. But then again, here's the thing, we might we must find forms that can't be mistaken for marriage that can still bless your situation. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. He didn't say and that. That's, and that's well, the... Well, yeah, he does. Pastoral prudence must discern whether there are forms of blessing requested by one or more person that do not convey a mistaken concept for marriage. Because they're asking for a blessing of their reality. Don't call it marriage. I think that's the agreement. Don't call it marriage. But can you still bless, colloquially, our gay relationship? What are they, what are they seeking? The blessing of God. Related to what? So he, what he's getting at here, in my opinion, pastoral prudence must adequately discern whether there are forms of blessings requested by one mm -hmm. or more persons. Right. They're requesting, essentially... You know, I'm I'm searching for God. Mm -hmm. I'm looking I'm looking for the path that God has laid before me. These are the people in my life that I feel supported and loved by. This relationship in particular is an outstanding relationship of complementarity. Well, Can we receive a blessing in the complementarity of our relationship, exclusive of what stands? doctrinally in the church. Yeah. I could see the ambiguity of what you're saying. Well, Trust me. And that was but I don't want to say I don't want to say this is what Pope Francis is saying. No, no, no. If I, he's I wouldn't not presume saying to say it. that. And that was the question I asked at the beginning. What can they discern should or shouldn't be blessed? Mm -hmm. What are they saying? What aspect of yeah. like me and Ryan, you know, we're yeah. both married, we're both straight dudes. We go up and say, hey, would you bless us, Father? What do you want us to bless you? Uh, what what part of your really bless our business relationship? Sure. Like, are y'all going off to, like, a mountain or something to yeah. put, like, cowboy hats no, on? No, 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 Seriously, like, okay, bless our friendship, okay? Bless uh -huh. our, our, our golf team, whatever the hell it is, right? That's fine. Bless the fact that two dudes are having sex. Mm -hmm. I can never bless that. You can't bless that. Right. So then what is there even to discern when two people come to you and ask for a blessing? You're asking what, what aspect, are what are you blessing? Mm -hmm. And this is all about same-sex relationships. Mm -hmm. If you're blessing their friendship, is their friendship clouded by their so sexual So what you're saying is he went down a path that Doesn't, strays from the direct nature. I think so. Of what? Yeah, I can see. I can see somebody you know, and, and, and thinking that. Thing, I, don't I don't think, think he did it on purpose. I don't no, think it's, and, and, it's and pastoral. And he yeah. loves people. Yeah. 
And, that, and that's not the interest of the church, right? The right. interest of the church is the pastoral care of each and every soul in the communal setting of life mm -hmm. directed toward their salvation. Yeah. Period. That's like, that, that's what the church's interest is. So how do we establish that? Well, people need to know that they're loved. People yeah, need to yeah. know that they're understood. People need to know that, hey, I can empathize with your situation. I've, I've had to deal a lot with... Uh, transgendered, um, this movement that, that creates all of these potentials of sexual identification, and it continues to grow and expand, well, pastorally, the person has a heart and a soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've, got to, I've got to meet them there. And they deserve that. Yeah. Like, you know, who am I to say, sorry, what you're struggling with is wrong. You're not welcome <laughs> in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay? Go. Yeah. Like that's not the church's position. Right. It's not the church's position. So but here's the here's so did you guys hear about the response the response of the congregation of the doctrine of faith to the dubium regarding the blessings of unions of same person of the same sex from uh, March of last year? You Ex did expand yeah. You didn't hear about it. Mm -hmm. No. You I all heard about this one, right? Mm -hmm. You know why you didn't hear about this one? Response. Negative. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Negative. Now, mm -hmm. here's an explanatory note saying why they said negative. Mm -hmm. So when was this put out? Two years ago. Okay. Gotcha. It's the same question. Yeah. But the clarity of no. Mm -hmm. Here's why. But you can't manipulate this. Mm -hmm. You can't make this into a news story. Yeah. You can't maybe kind of possibly use this to support your side of an argument. But this is the kind of answer that is very clear, mm -hmm. right? And I think the church for better or worse, needs to be clear, especially in today's age and age, when, I mean, I can get a, I can go on AI and I can have you say anything I want you to say in two mm -hmm. minutes. There needs to be clear, unambiguous teaching. Yeah. And, and, like, and in I this document, see... this, they say, we cannot bless sin, period. And that is a sinful action. And I mean, this response here is like, for this reason, it is not licit to impart a blessing on relationships or partnerships, even stable, that involves sexual activity outside of marriage. So as a relationship, if it involves sexuality but is outside of marriage, there is no way that that can be blessed. That was a clear response. Again, it would go back to the disorder of me, you know, shacking up with a woman before I'm, I'm getting married. And they saying, can't hey, bless, bless that either. Bless us. They can't do that. You know? Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, and then, you know, and then the compassion of a pastor to understand mm -hmm. and, and to guide them and through. to walk and shepherd them yeah. through that yeah. painful process. Yeah. I, it, I mean, I see what I, we're all on the same page. I think with all so. This, stuff. this is and, just you know, a, this is a but, conversation. But, I, but what, I, what I'd like to express, too, is I read this, and as a priest and as a pastor, <laughs> this couldn't be more clear for me. Mm hmm. Is it because that I'm, uh, you know, like I'm a papist or something like that? Like we get called papists sometimes. Uh, you're an altar -mountainist. Like, you know, like for me, for me, it's like I have respect for the Pope. This is what the Pope says. I'm going to read it very carefully. And I'm going to try to understand in the mind of his pastoral care right. what he's driving at. This, There's nothing in here that I myself am saying, oh, Lord, here we go. This is going to lead us to schism. No, this is going to hopefully lead us to better pastoral care. For all people. I don't think people should see how the sausage is made, to be honest. I, I think <laughs> you you're know? I think you're probably right in Here's respect the, to that. This is a this is like a years, it you, should be a closed letter saying brothers, dear brothers. It should be just you, to the brothers. For two thousand years, us peasants, we were out on the farm trying to, you know, not die and Survive. bring our rye harvest in. We didn't care about what the cardinals in Rome were debating theologically. And I don't think honestly it's really proper or spiritually beneficial that we do. But and it is you, spiritually and beneficial for me to read this because I'm not a pastor. I, I have I have pastoral care for yeah. souls. Yeah. And I and I need to be able to toe that line of casting the nets wide but to be me, able to... Let, let me again ask this. Shouldn't this be coming from your bishop? Should you be reading the Pope and the Cardinal's communication? Shouldn't that filter down to the bishop and then the bishop tells you? Like... Like, because what I'm saying is, is I think in the last 20 years, we've gotten a real inside look of church politics and they're starting to use media as a way to influence people like they would do in like in a regular election. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, we got this synod coming up. Let's start releasing and leaking documents and asking questions and trying to pressure people into making a decision one way or another. That's not good for the average person. and For the ass in the pew, that doesn't help. It just doesn't. It would know? be cool to watch... Uh 
the Arian Harris he go down in the 300s. That would have been cool to see on Twitter. And social oh, media. I know. And then oh, you'd, yeah. have some dude, you'd have some dude on Twitter be like, dude, I, can you believe Arius is getting dogged like that? Arius is right. And they're like, no, Nicholas. And like, who do you support? Not my bishop. Hashtag. Like, <laughs> but did you see that haymaker of Nicholas? Like, Man, he popped him in the mouth. Yeah. That was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Let's watch that 50,000 times. You know, I absolutely, I, I can, I can sympathize with the people who want this blessing. I really can, because to them it is so fundamental and so obvious that they're in love with this person or that person, and they mm -hmm. also love their faith and they want to synthesize the two. Mm -hmm. I completely understand their motivation, and I understand the Pope's motivation here to try to provide pastorally for those people who are asking for the blessing of God. I think the response from two years ago was a better approach, saying no, and here's why. Yeah. But again, I'm and not he a was pastor. the pope two years ago, right? Yeah. But you know what you had? You have a different prefect for the congregation of faith. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. You know, it, we've we've talked a lot about this. Uh, you know, because there's some brothers in my life priests that are like right at the teat of the, the Vatican and knows exactly what's happening and all this other stuff and all the congregations. You're, you're my, you're my guy too. And mm. knowing what's happening on the political scope of things, it's like, for me as, as a pastor, do I stay locked into all of this bureaucratic, uh, nonsense. interaction, you know, and, and I wouldn't say that bureaucracy is nonsense. Like there is a, there is a need for that governing the large body that we are as the church as a sovereign nation. No doubt. I just don't want to really <laughs> do it. Yeah. I'm not. Uh, that's not me. Like that's. I'm yeah. not that. You know. I. I'm much more suited to being in the trenches, being in the church, being present, being present to people, <laughs> yeah. trying my best to love, be them patient with them. I'm not great at it. I'm yeah. growing. You know. Yeah. I'd rather be in the trenches and, and growing in holiness in the context of, you know, me being a sinner in a sea of sinners and asking Jesus to help shepherd us all. You know, like. You have gotten better at showing me patience when I leave all the. No, the I lost my mind the after the pistachios you know, that I night, walked on early he morning Kelly, to get my cup of coffee. He brings the Kelly first aside you... to me, and me and Kelly, he's like, "Dude, freaking Della Cross, always throwing his pistachios. I can't stand when he does that. I'm gonna knock this dude out." <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> you know it nuts. goes back to that. Episode. He does it just to drive me nuts. No, now. he does he did it, it accidentally. No, he goes like initially. he's like rolling bones, and he's like throws it on the floor, <laughs> and he's like, he's like, he's got a house cleaner. He they can clean it up. <laughs> Um, yeah, look, it, it's a, it's a tough time out there. And I think this episode made no one happy. And oh, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. We never make people happy because you're like, you don't take that hard stance and you're not a celebrity priest, you know, telling the Pope should be thrown into the no, ocean and not we're not I'm casting not your guy people. If you want that for me. But I think uh, hopefully we took a, 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 a real responsible approach to looking at this because people are talking at about it. At minimum, thank God we just read it. <laughs> like, we read, read it, it, man. Wow. Read it. Crazy. Crazy. Read talk. it over again. <laughs> like, you know, you read one line, you're like, the Pope's saying what? <laughs> Don't even read the whole thing. Pope do what now? The Pope do what now? <laughs> well, man, shoot, I got I'm to get my impression. I got to flush the toilet get out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know. Bob, load up the car. We're getting our blessing. <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude! Oh, uh, no, but but you know the most important thing is just show respect to people, show respect to the Pope, read his read his stuff, read what he's saying, trust the Holy Spirit, you know, and and it's your church. God. In truth, in truth, that's exactly Papa Bono. It's his church. Yeah, it's his church. You know, we do our very best to follow divine revelation that is immutable, <laughs> that cannot change. We can't reinterpret it. It'll never change. The beauty of the transcendence of the church has been established by Jesus Christ. It's still here. And knuckleheads have tried to get in the middle of all this bureaucratic stuff. Saying if it was just human beings, this thing would have been dried up a long time ago. I do be him for you, too. You have to answer yes or no. <laughs> No. <laughs> you have to. Let me answer the dubia first. You just said, you did, I said no. No, that was, okay. Right, what three. you got for me, Craig? Number one. Is it licit and is it necessary and is it beneficial for people to use the hollow app? Yes. Do yeah. number one. Ding, 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 ding. Positive. 
If you go to CatholicTalkShow.com forward slash hollow, hello. there is no doubt about it. This is a great app. It's the number one Catholic app. It is full of so many features that Catholics can use. There's no dubia. There is no dubia about it. What's up, bro? <laughs> No dubia, man. No dubs. <laughs> Sans dubage, bro. <laughs> uh, so uh, what Hollow is, is it's a awesome prayer app. It has uh, Lexio Divina. It has the Bible. It has podcasts. It has music and meditation. It has the rosary. It has teaching. Um, there's a reason. I mean, there is people all over the world using this. Over a billion people, a billion prayers have been prayed through this app. It's the number one app for a reason, and we've partnered with them now for years. Um, From the beginning. And they've got some amazing features. Yeah, it's um, the most new robust features. library of yeah. Catholic resources ever created, and it's the style of the application is just next level. It's very enjoyable to just stop if you have five minutes or if you want to spend an hour or even multiple hours on this application. You can truly find something that will be very, very supportive to your spiritual life. Yeah. So right now um, in October, they got a rosary challenge for the month of uh, the rosary. Um, so each week they're going to have a different person reading the mysteries of the rosary and explaining them. Uh, a really cool thing coming up on October 31st, um, <laughs> they're doing a near-death November with Father Spitzer. Oh, that's where he's very going, cool. That's a cool thing to throw into this awesome. app, right? Oh, I love that. Near-death uh, November. That's, that's going to be perfect, dude. Yeah. I'm going to start using that. That was that's one of our tech. best episodes. Yeah, with yeah, Father I love, Spitzer. I love that one with Spitzer. Uh, and then they also got the things that they've had that they've made their name off of, you know, Pray 25 challenges. They've got um, the... Bible in a year with Father Mike. They got all kinds of things. They got catechism. A lot of great things on there. So uh, go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash hollow to try it out for free. Do me a number two. Do me a number. I'm ready. Is it or is it not a good thing for men to join in prayer, fraternity, and asceticism under Exodus to gear, turn themselves into better men? Yes. All right. <laughs> well, that was clear. That's clear. See, you're a good pastor because you're clear. Now explain why. Because it's great. <laughs> it's no, stuff. I mean, Exodus is, a, we a, again, another partnership that we've had for years uh, from the beginning. And I'm just so proud of the work that they've done. It's really revolutionized a lot of men's uh, spiritual life in my parish. And just seeing the effect that it's had, you know, across the board, across national barriers, too. Mm -hmm. There are tons of brothers that have entered into the ascetical life, into a prayer life and fraternity, where they are responding in that form of exodus, of turning away from the world and all of its grippings and entering more deeply into the spiritual life and living that faith that they are called to as men and being that leader, you know, that they are called to be. So if you haven't done Exodus yet, make sure that you check Exodus out. Go to Exodus 90. But we have a great offering for you. Yeah. So if you go to CatholicTalkShow.com forward slash Exodus, you can try the app out for free. And our friends at Exodus, um, they've expanded their spiritual exercise. Just, you know, I think a lot of people think of them as the 90 day, the 90 thing, day thing leading yeah. up to Easter. Uh, so much more on the There's on the so much more now. to Exodus than that. So like, right, for example, right mm -hmm. now, they're doing um, an exploration of the first book of Maccabees, which is a really kind of mm -hmm. sword and sandals epic yeah. war book, right? Uh, and I think it teaches men how to kind of be spiritual warriors. So this is a thing called Battles in Autumn. And they're seeing how the faith and the, the masculine response in the book of Maccabees can be modeled in today's world. So again, you've got prayer, fraternity, asceticism in that book, and they're trying to show you how to do that. So you don't have to wait to January 1st, which is when the 90-day exodus starts this year. You can get started right away and get prepared for that uh, Full Exodus. And let's face it, I mean, you might be out there like asceticism, like no entertainment, nothing to drink, cold showers. I'm like, ah, I don't know. You could always approach it like Father Tedlow. He's <laughs> yeah. done like, I think, five Exodus 90s now. He's a yeah. cafeteria <laughs> journeyman. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we are called to greatness yeah. and we are called to our Catholic faith and living it out well with pastoral zeal. God bless you guys, and we will see you next week. Pray for the Pope. Mm.